Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. You give us a very valuable lectures with the disease cases analyzed. Uh, some experts and doctors, audience, I just want to ask you their interested necessary questions face to face. Uh, next, we will connect them one by one. Thank you. Uh, first, we'd like to uh, connect Dr. Deng from USA. He is the medical director of Bentham Integrative Medicine Center at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and professor of clinical medicine at Will Cornell Medical College of Cornell University in New York City. Uh, Dr. Deng, please, this is your question time. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for the excellent presentation and uh, very valuable information from your experience. Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, I got some questions, uh, both from me, also from the audience. And the first question is, someone was asking, what are the criteria specifically for initiating uh, IPPV, intermittent positive pressure ventilation? Uh, IPPV, you mean the interpret, uh, so you mean the, the, to intubate the patients and use a, Pardon? The, the, the question from the audience is IPPV intermediate, intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Maybe it's called a different name, uh, but anyway, oh, okay. maybe yeah. tell us about the criteria for intubation. Okay. Yeah, you know, the, the, the intubation, uh, it depends on the patient's situation. So, uh, you know, the, according to our experience, so once the patients, uh, basically you could not get the good saturation with a high nasal flow oxygen support so that's very important so usually after you know usually we, we give the patients about you know about 65 or 70 percent fio2 uh, uh, the device is a high nasal uh, flow oxygen support but if this still did not work after maybe uh, uh, three, four, three three hours the patients you know, still have very very bad you know saturation the 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 you know the SpO two never reach ninety three percent. Then we need and also the patient had very strong cough uh, and you know uh, plus you know the the fever. So that we uh, we must consider intubated patients as early as possible. So we need the patients to rest the lung and not uh, you know a very strong cough. The frequency of cough, I think. I believe this is a very strong indicator for the early intubation. And after a strong cough, the patients usually have very, very bad saturation. They usually maybe decrease to 75 or 70 even. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question is because in the United States, there's a shortage of hospital beds. So a lot of patients with mild symptoms are discharged to home for home quarantine, even though when they have symptoms such as a low-grade fever, some cough, some fatigue. Uh, you mentioned the key factors are to watch for high fever, dry cough, and dyspnea. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not have the ability to monitor their pulse ox, pulse ox, pulse ox symmetry at home. So when you say high fever, is there a particular number, 35.5, 39 degrees Celsius, or anything like that? Yeah. So the criteria for the high fever is more than uh, more than 39 Celsius. So that one is very bad. So this the, the cause of the disease is usually like that. So the first one or two days, the patients only have very low grade of fever. For example, they only have, you know, they, it's usually less than, 38.3 Celsius. So maybe after three to five days, the patient, you know, the fever suddenly go up. So they can be very bad. The, you know, they up to, you know, they, they usually, you know, be up, you know, more than 39.5. So this stage is very dangerous. So that's, that during that stage, we need, you know, admitted patients as early as possible. Okay. So also, uh, you know, this you don't have the, you know, the the oximeter. But you know, in China, most patients they have the oximeter. Uh, maybe in New York they don't have. But you, that case, you need to ask patient to watch how much they can walk. So the how much uh, you know distance they walk and how the the movement, how the activity induce the cough. This uh, this uh, you know correlation 
the, it is usually tight, tightly correlated. So uh, the patients usually, uh, you know, walk and then they cough. So that means have some some very strong indicators for the you know duration of disease. Very few people in the United States they have home uh, oxygen monitoring and pulse oximeter. There was a saying saying uh, patients if you can take a deep breath and hold your breath for five seconds or ten seconds you're all right. But if you cannot hold your breath for five seconds or ten seconds, you have probably desaturation and dyspnea. That's when you may need to go to the hospital. Is there yeah. any validity of that? I, I think I think that's true, but the problem is that during, at that stage, it's a little bit late. I'm still thinking, you, yeah, you need to you know, you ask a patient to, to do some activities, for example, to go to the restroom. And if they go to the restroom and the cough frequency suddenly become you know, increasing, so that's a dangerous sign. That's very helpful. Uh, so to summarize, high temperature for people in home monitor, home quarantine and being monitored, temperature above 39.0 Celsius. Yes. Dry cough, especially when induced with activity or yes. shortness of breath, dyspnea upon light activity. These are indications for escalation of care for acute care and going to the hospital. Are they yes. correct? Uh, yes, I think so. Correct. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the last question I have is about protection of medical personnel. And yeah. both in the intubation setting or more importantly, in the regular care of the patients. I know uh, in China, all these patients, COVID patients are cohorted into a hospital or floor. Uh, while here, uh, we are unable to do that. So patients still stay in the room. So and here they exercise uh, droplet, uh, droplet precaution, basically mask and face shield, but a very light gown. And I see in China people wear this hazmat like overall from top to the bottom from head to shoes. Do you think um, that kind of uh, protection is an overkill or is appropriate or uh, should be done? Uh, I think, you know, regarding the intubation, it's a very dangerous procedure. And you must protect yourself, you know, very strictly. You know, even uh, where this gun, like China, we still have a uh, physician in Tianjin, he got inf infected right after intubation. Because he intubated quite a lot of patients. He, after, you know, 30 intubations, he got, you know, infected. So that's, uh, you know, so right now, so probably we still need some kind of positive air, you know, you know, like some kind of device, you know, with a mask and, you know, they can, you know, do some, uh, you know, positive, like a like small C-pipe machine, that kind of, you know, mask. So that, that may be more helpful for this, you know, while you do very dangerous procedure, like intubation, like a bronchoscopy, uh, this part is, uh, you know, we need to be really careful, really careful. Uh, and, you know, the, you know, regarding the, the regular people, when you do the regular care for those patients, you still need to wear the gown and wear the, you know, the masks. Uh, and also the, the, you know, the face shield, uh, to protect yourself from the droplet and probably from the air zone. Because uh, nobody confirmed the air zone uh, for those patients, but I, I still think it's, uh, it's very dangerous too. In China, you know, for the uh, all the nurses and the physicians in Wuhan, nobody got infected. So it's zero. So that means, you know, our protection uh, is appropriate. But I'm not sure in New York and in other cities in the United States, how what's the percentage of the, the infection of, of health workers. I, I think it's still, if you don't do this kind of protection, the infection rate is still high. Because right now, we, we, we are not too sure about what kind of, you know, transmission pathway, you know, so in that case, we, we need to be more prepared. Uh, then not uh, then must be better than the more prepared. How do you think? Yeah, thank you. I think now it's too early to know uh, because right now uh, in New York, uh, is we're uh, in the United States, we're still at the early part of the curve. So for, in the care of regular COVID patients, not doing invasive procedures, 
do we need N95 mask or just a regular surgical mask plus a face shield and gown would be enough? Uh, I, I, you know, in China, when you, you know, the, quite a lot of physicians initially they just wear like a, like a, you know, the procedure mask. But actually, you know, quite a lot of physicians and nurses got infected. So I think still uh, the, the N95 is very necessary for this health worker you know, and this yes. shield. It's yeah. very, very, Thank very important. Thank you. Uh, because right now there's a shortage of N95 masks uh, here. So we're trying to, uh, stratify and, and, and yeah. use them in an efficient way. I, I'm I'm trying to buy some, you know, to donate to to United States right now. So we already got some kind of, you know, we already buy some <laughs> yeah. for you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor Lee. Re we really appreciate your expertise and your time. Um, I'm done with my questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doctor Lee, and thank you, Doctor Deng. Uh, next, we will connect. Dr. Malik Kalmus, Director of the Polish Society of Traditional Chinese Medicine. Can you hear us, Dr. Kalmus? Yes, yes, I hear you. Okay, please, this is your question time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Li. Uh, I have some questions also. Uh, first, uh, are any special advices how to treat SARS-CoV-2 infected pregnant women? So, uh, for the yeah, this uh, you know this question, uh, you know we we do have several cases, you know the several you know pregnant women got infected. Uh, it, it's uh, you know I saw one patient, one pregnant woman at the age of twenty seven, and she died from the COVID nineteen. So I think is they really need to if you are pregnant, you really need to be careful because uh, you know. Uh, nobody, you know, that means, you know, this uh, virus, uh, you know, nobody have the immune for this virus, basically. So everyone is uh, vulnerable to this, uh, you know, the virus. And especially for the pregnant woman, they may need some kind of more lung capacity or, you know, um, so, so they really need, you know, we really need to be take care of those pregnant people uh, aggressively than other people. I think so. Did I answer your question? Yes, yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, how, how many asymptotic SARS-CoV-2 carriers are estimated? Uh, pardon? I, I'm not sure. So, how many, how many asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 carriers are estimated? It means... Oh, okay, uh, asymptomatic. Yeah? Mean how, uh, what's the percentage of the... Uh, asymptomatic people, right? Uh, it means uh, how many how many people don't know that they are infected, uh, and w what is I, the number? Oh, okay, I see. Actually, they got infected, but this is a, a uh, We don't have the exact data for those, you know, asymptomatic uh, patients, but we, you know, the so even for the mild mild symptom people, they don't think they got infected. Actually, they, they just have some diarrhea and they had fatigue and they they never think they, they got infected. So we, we, we don't have the exact data for that, but we do know quite a large population for those people. So especially for the children and for the young person, young, young adults. So they really don't have, you know, bad symptoms they don't have they even don't have any fever they just have very mild fatigue and they just have very mild diarrhea a mild cough we we don't know the exact how many they they got the because they nobody does a test for that so that's the thing so so that's we don't have the exact data for this this question uh, I have also a question from some medical doctor, but she's also a TCM practitioner. Yes. She would ask that, could you describe the nature of coronavirus according to TCM and penetration of this pathogen uh, according to the Wenbing loon or Shanghan loon? 
Oh, when being okay. Oh, they well, are I, so, so I understand your question. Yes. So, uh, according to uh, you know the like the, the first question. So the how we describe this pathogen in Chinese medicine. So we think this this uh, this this coronavirus belong to the cold and belong to the white. So basically, it's a uh, cold and white. So that means we need something expel the cold and the dry the white. So that's uh, how we prescribe the principle. Uh, regarding the sex question, regarding the how we you what kind of book we need to use, uh, we actually you know uh, both books are good for this you know for this disease. Uh, you know the, we had a different success. Chinese medicine doctors they they, they try the different uh, you know the combinations. Uh, some doctors they use uh, Shanghai and some have, some physicians use Wenbing, so they all works. But I think regarding this disease, I prefer Wen uh, Wen Wen, because uh, why? Because this disease change rapidly. You can see how how fast the patients can deteriorate. So just uh, you know, you can count after five days they may become a lung injury. And they, they died after 10 days. So it's very dangerous disease. Very rapidly changed the disease. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. I, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Now it's okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. Now. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Kamos, as well. And uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, next, and uh, the doctor from Brazil, uh, that is Dr. Reginaldo Filho. He is the director of Brazilian School of Chinese Medicine. Uh, Dr. Reginaldo? Hi. Hello? Yeah, this is your question time, please. Okay. First of all, thanks for this opportunity to exchange information. Dr. Lee, my question yes. is, as now in Brazil, the number of cases are increasing and uh, we are suggested to do quarantine. Actually, in some states and some cities, we are also enforced to do quarantine right now. Uh, do you recommend to people at home, they can do something to improve their immunity, such as moxibustion? What is your opinion on that? Uh regarding the uh, the i think the early quarantine certainly is very important and uh, uh, it's a cost effective measures so uh, i think the another thing is uh, regarding mox uh, it's very good it's very good but you know the even after you do that it doesn't mean you have you know, to this virus once you touch this virus you still can get it so so nothing can really you know, prevent us from the, you know, the, uh, from this virus. Only thing we could, we could do is we try to develop the vaccination. You know, this will not happen within several months. It must be, I think it probably will take, you know, up to 18 months. You know, even 18 months, I think, is also very early. Uh, it's a long way to go, but uh, nothing can really works for the prevention of this virus. Everyone is vulnerable to that. But this, you know, you certainly need to use some kind of Chinese medicine to make yourself try, even you get it, you can make your symptom very mild and you, 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 you don't fall into the you know, very severe stage, the very severe type. So that's what we still suggest, especially for those people uh, who had cold and white in their stomach. Uh, you know, according to Chinese theory. So they still need to mock passion. They need to do some acupuncture. They need to take some Chinese herb to help some themselves. So for the obese patients, they need to lose weight. But I don't know, you know, the, how can they lose weight within a week? So what we saw, most people, they, are really, they really have some kind of problem of obese. And also the sleep apnea. These are the vulnerable most vulnerable population, and they can fall into the stage of acute lung injury. So these patients, they need to take care of themselves. 
uh, you know, even now. I see. Uh, my point is, I, I totally agree and understand there's uh, no such thing to avoid the virus. The idea of moxibustion would be more to improve the health. So yes. as being in a good health would be a little bit uh, stronger for the body to fight the virus if you get in contact with it, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. So you can regulate yourself to adapt. You know, once the virus come to your body, coming to your body, you know, basically you can regulate yourself to uh, adapt to this. You know, the, the this uh, vulnerable situation. So you don't you don't make your you start to kind of storm uh, trigger. So that that's really helpful. Moxibustion and you know the Chinese herbs and acupuncture they all help you to do that. Perfect. And as in Brazil now, we are coming out of summer right now. So this year, my college, we offered uh, uh, the acupoint application of herbs. Do you know that uh, summer treatment for winter disease? Yes, and we've yes. been monitoring those patients, and they say they, they, they are experiencing very good health right now. So I really believe on this uh, uh, improving the quality of life and improving the health using Chinese medicine theory. And I encourage more people from other countries to also consider that even on countries where Mex uh, Chinese medicine is not officially accepted, but we shall teach and explain this for our patients. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that this, you know, mox vision and transdermal therapy, you should use that, you know, at this season. Because I, I believe, you know, the next uh, pandemic uh, will go to Brazil or this, this, these countries, Argentina. Because right now you are going to to the, the, the country will be similar like uh, what we have in September, right? So that's very dangerous. You know, maybe like October, that season is very dangerous. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing your valuable information. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ryogi, and thank you, Dr. Reginado. Uh, next, we have Dr. Amir Human Kazami from Iran. He is also the Vice President of WFAS and also the Vice Dean of Tehila Medical University of Traditional Chinese Medicine Department. Uh, Dr. Human, Hello? is he Hello. online? I did not see him here. Uh, Okay, I got a message and uh, he asked my help uh, to give the questions. Okay, sure. uh, I will read his question. Uh, what is the syndrome differentiations of pulmonary effusion in TCM and which herbs can be useful? Uh, that is uh, his first question. Pulmonary effusion for the COVID-19? Um, Differentiations of pulmonary effusion in TCM and which herbs can be useful? Okay. Yeah. So the pulmonary effusion from COVID-19 is rare. The first thing I want to talk. So, but you know, the like if you have some other ideology on your pulmonary effusion, then uh, you know you you certainly need to differentiate is is a hot is cold. Or it's uh, it's hot, or it's uh, it's from the the weakness of qi uh, and some other things. Uh, but certainly, the, the major drug what you want to use is to use some uh, the dong tong xia zi ha ba cordyceps. Cordyceps is very helpful. Is cordyceps, cordyceps and chai hu. These are all the very good drug herbs for that, you know, for this, uh, this, this, this kind of you know, the, uh, symptoms. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I think and he got the answer. Uh, next question also from him. Which herbs are useful for prevention? Especially oh. herbs we can find in other countries, not only in China. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, like uh, in Iran, the Honghua is uh, also very good for uh, Honghua, the Fan Honghua, I, I think, uh, I think it, it, it's very popular in Iran. So it's good, uh, you know, the 
they they are they already took that you know I think in every every meal I I buy I was there uh, last year. Um, I, I I don't know the, the real what kind of herb they usually use in Iran, but maybe maybe something we could discuss later. As he showed us, you know what kind of herb they probably they is most common in his country. Okay, thank you so much. I think probably uh, Dr. Fuhrman got the answer. If he needs to be get uh, more connection with you, and then uh, he will email to you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Li's question time, and also thank you for your expertise. Uh, as you introduced, the COVID nineteen uh, belongs to category of epidemic disease in traditional Chinese medicine. Our suggestion is hope to strengthen the support for clinical research on traditional medicine, integration of Chinese and Western medicine for the prevention and the treatment of COVID-19, and also to provide methodological support to organize experts to evaluate and share the research results of traditional medicine against the COVID-19 in a timely manner. And if it's possible to establish a mechanism and a good platform for sharing and communicating traditional medical information. And today's lecture is very valuable and attract more attention of doctors and experts from different countries and regions. So we really hope through this platform, we can keep sharing all information in multiple languages. We also welcome worldwide volunteer doctors and experts join us to translate master's presentations into different languages. Also, through this platform, we can keep sharing doctors' experience fighting against COVID-19. Keep doing scientific researches, publishing high-quality evidence is the basis. So, let's thank you, Dr. Lee, again for his very valuable lectures with the disease cases and uh, effective uh, information. Thank you. Let's give us uh, give him a uh, warm clap. Thank you. Mm. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Next speaker will be Professor Wang Qi, executive and company academician of Chinese Academy of Engineering, tenured the professor of Beijing University of Chinese Medicine. Also, consultation expert of the fourth central health community. Next lecture, he will introduce the TCM prevention methodology on COVID 19. Hope can see you again on 10 p.m. April 1st. Thank you for listening and see you on Wednesday. That's all for today. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, at last. Uh, Interpretation of Chinese languages. Uh, Dr. Tang Jingjing, also from Anmen Hospital of China Academy of Chinese Medical Sciences. Thank you for her hard work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jingjing. Thank you.